Man, does it feel good to be back in this room again. Welcome back to the Skill Builders Guild. Thanks again for watching. Uh, it's been a little while. I think it's probably been a month since I sat down in here and actually recorded a video. And for that, I apologize. Work has been nuts. Way more crazy than I think it's ever been. Uh, thankful for the work, of course, but it's getting to be a little bit much. Maddie needs some hobby time. Anyway, I wanted to jump right back in and show you a project that I've been working on for two years. Not because it's complicated, just because it's taken me that long to kind of work up to actually finishing it. But now it's done, and here it is. Toyota Trekker. Uh, you're like, that's just a Forerunner. No, it isn't. Uh, Winnebago, of all companies, actually made this rear portion of a Toyota Hilux into sort of this, you know, what you would call a Forerunner looking or SUV style body. Uh, this whole back half was fiberglass and they kind of made this before the Forerunner existed in partnership with Toyota America. So you could buy a Trekker like this before the Forerunner existed. And then Toyota just made the Forerunner and put this out of business. Winnebago obviously went on and did other things, but that's not the focus of this episode. It's all about Trekkers today, but it's really more about what's underneath this Trekker that makes it really special. So let's get right into talking about Superscale 2020 and active suspension or realistic suspension movement because that's what this truck is going to offer you. Uh, I built this uh, based around an Axial SCX-10 II raw builders kit. Uh, there were a few modifications uh, over a stock builders kit that uh, made this a little different, a little more special. For one, I'm using the SCX-10 II kit style transmission. So that's the one that actually sits lower and a little more rearward in the chassis. Uh, and that's just to get me a full interior, or at least most of a full interior. We'll get into that later. For electronics, I'm running the Spectrum Firma 40 ESC with a 16 turn, five slot Tekken brushed motor. A uh, nice, easy, low maintenance kind of system. And to handle the steering duties, I'm running a slim Spectrum servo. And I'll be sure to put links down below to all of the things I've used uh, to make this build happen so you can follow along and maybe build your own Trekker of sorts. When I built this truck, I did model it after an existing Toyota Trekker that I found on the internet. There's not a lot of Trekkers out there anymore and certainly not a lot were made when they first made them. Um, I don't think people understood what an SUV was back then. I mean, the Suburban and stuff existed, but uh, you know, this was not a very popular model. But I really like it because of that, I think. Trekkers are definitely cool and uh, definitely was a fun build to do. But the heart of this project is actually the Superscale 2020 Active Suspension System or Dynamic Suspension System. And I've got it loaded and it's kind of running right now. It's not doing anything because it's not going anywhere. But as soon as you do this, you can see that there are a bunch of things happening here to make some pretty cool suspension movement happen. You might have first heard of Superscale 2020 through some of the drift stuff that he's done, and that's where this system really kind of became a thing. Uh, it got a lot of attention online, and uh, his car that he built is pretty awesome and it shows off this really awesome dynamic suspension system. He's developed a new set of firmware for crawlers specifically. So now you've got a system that you can use in your trucks just like this one. And what this system offers is realistic suspension movement. So if I lift a wheel here, you can see that there's a little bit of that shake and shimmy and sort of that natural kind of heavy movement that's built in. Even if you press down on the truck, it does the same thing. It's pretty cool. It's really, really interesting. And how this system works is through uh, an Arduino uh, controller. 
and some very sophisticated software that Superscale has built himself. And uh, the great thing about that is that it's constantly being updated. This is the most recent update, uh, version 1.25, and it allows for ride height adjustment from your radio, which is really super cool. And here's a little demonstration on how that works. I've just set it up to an auxiliary channel uh, with uh, linear steps instead of like a three position switch. You could also obviously set it up in any way you like, uh, but this allows you to vary the ride height on the go. And it's kind of fun. It's kind of neat. Uh, it doesn't really offer much in the way of performance upgrades and none of this system is really about performance. It's really about scale realism, uh, but it's a nice added feature that he's worked into the software. And it's, it's pretty neat to see this in action. Of course, it's going to look great on video, which is why you're seeing little clips of video of this truck outside as I'm going through the demonstration, because it is so cool and just makes for great looking video. Uh, not only is the uh, Arduino board in there and some software, but there is a gyro, of course, and that's how the system knows whether it's a rear wheel that's lifting or a front wheel that's lifting to give you that accurate kind of movement. It's so awesome. And I'm actually pretty surprised that I was able to fit it in such a small package. Uh, let's take the body off here and go through this so you can get a better idea of how this whole system works. I've installed the Superscale system on this SCX-10 II, and he offers a uh, set of mounts for the SCX-10 II, the TRX-4, or the Red Cat Gen 8. And included in that system is the Arduino controller, which is right here. Uh, you also get the plans for the 3D printed mounts for the servos required to uh, actuate the suspension. I've had to do some pretty extensive modifications on the front bracket to make it work with this tiny Hilux body. If you were to have a uh, Lexan Cherokee or uh, some other SUV body, there would be no modifications required to these 3D printed files. You can obviously print them at home. Uh, that's because that's why he gives you the STLs or you can use Shapeways or another company to print them for you. You don't need a 3D printer per se, but it is super helpful to have one because it makes working with this system uh, a lot faster. And plus, if you need to modify something to make it work for your specific setup, then you've got that option as well. Uh, it is necessary to mount it in such a way that it is level and upright and placed in the right direction on the truck to make the firmware work. The great thing about this firmware is that he does offer options to uh, have it mounted in a different orientation and use that firmware specific to that orientation. Um, so you also need four servos. I'm just using four servos that I got off of Amazon. They came as a four pack. Uh, they're the Tower MG996R. High torque, I guess. Uh, it doesn't really matter, uh, but it is a functional thing that you will need. Um, the other thing you will need is some sort of BEC. I'm running a 20 amp BEC, which gives plenty of power from a 3S battery to all four servos that are using this system. It also powers the Arduino box, so that's all you really need to get going. This is an SCX-10 II. The kit um, raw builders kit is what it started as. Uh, this is the kit transmission here. So I've actually moved the motor and the transmission as far rearward as possible to give me a nice stable uh, mounting point for the super scale box and to give me plenty of room up front as well uh, for an interior. I wanted to make sure I ran a truck that looked as scale as possible. So it had an interior inside it uh, and uh, didn't show off as much of the electronics as possible and this system kind of worked for me just the way it was. These are Mod 19 sliders. I got these printed on Shapeways. These allow for mounting of a Hilux body on an SCX-10 II chassis. A great piece, uh, really nice firm mounting system and completely hidden from the outside, which is another nice bonus as well. Uh, like I said, I'll be sure to put links down below to all these products so you can kit out your next truck with the super scale system. Having that auxiliary to adjust ride height on the fly is pretty neat. You can actually see it working here. It's slowly creeping up and we'll get it to lower itself too, which is also really rad. So cool. A lot of cool electronic wizardry at work here, making this system do what it does. 
and uh, it's going to look awesome out on the trails. I just love seeing that suspension movement. <laughs> and of course, because you can change all of these parameters, you can dial in how much or how little dampening there is based on how much multiplier there is or how much spring rate. Uh, you can change all of those things to give it more or less of this suspension movement. And the great thing about it is that it is infinitely customizable. If you've got a big heavy Chevy body on top of this thing and you really wanna see that thing rock around, you can set it up that way. If you've got something lighter like this Hilux that I'm running, you can set it up to be a lighter sort of suspension. It is infinitely adjustable and it is really, really cool to see out on the trails. It's a pretty much uh, set it and forget it style system. Once you make the adjustments on your analog inputs here, it remembers them and there's no need to reset the controller each time. It just works automatically. Now, uh, this is very much not a stock SCX-102 anymore. Um, because of all of these modifications and all of these extra servos and all of this room for stuff, uh, I had to make some changes. The servo normally is mounted uh, right about here on the chassis. I had to get a front servo mount. Uh, this is from GCM Racing, uh, meant for the SCX-10 too, but it puts a servo right up front here. And you'll notice there's not a lot of clearance there between my servos that are uh, powering the suspension and the servo that's powering the steering. So I went with a slim, uh, Spectrum S6250 servo, uh, lots of torque in that servo, by the way, uh, and <laughs> there's, there's a lot of that when the system's running. <laughs> there's a lot of movement. It's so cool. Um, so yeah, not a lot of room there, especially with the modified uh, front mount here. I did have to trim a lot of material away, so it's probably not as strong as it should be. Uh, but my Prusa did a really good job of printing it, so it's been holding up. I did add a little bit of shoe goo into those areas where I shaved away a lot of material just to make it a little stronger. Combined with the Tekken 16 turn 5 slot motor and the Firma 40, you've got a really nice uh, basic setup here, but really good smooth low end, a lot of torque when needed, and uh, powered on 3S with the smart battery from Spectrum here. Uh, I'm just running a 2200 3S pack uh, and then powering the rest of the servos with another 3S pack, this one from Helios. Uh, it's a little 45C 1500 pack, uh, which is perfect. It sits right back there in the uh, little gas tank that I modified from an old SCX-10. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's put the body back on and get a couple more beauty shots of this thing in action. So as you can see with the Trekker body, everything's nicely hidden underneath. Uh, I did have to make a slight bend in the hood to fit that mount underneath there. As I said, this Hilux body is pretty small and not something I would recommend if you were going to do this yourself. Uh, it did require a lot of modifying. Not that I don't think you're up to it. I just think that it's a bigger headache than you might be willing to deal with. Um, I should mention that this Trekker back end is a resin piece. It's not styrene. Uh, my friend Turks and Jerps made this and <laughs> my friend Turks and Jerps made this. He uh, originally did make it in styrene, but this is a rotocast resin piece uh, that uh, he did a few copies of and sent them out to some people. So there are a few other Trekkers out there, um, but this one is mine. This scale metal supplies antenna was a nice little addition as well. I thought it added a little bit of realism and uh, is accurate to the uh, full size model that I'm replicating. Uh, these wheels are custom from CNC Custom Wheels. Uh, Greg made these for me uh, two years ago when I started this truck uh, and uh, they replicate what's also on the full size. So a nice little addition there. Uh, let me spin it around here so you can get a look at the tailgate. Um, I did tint all of these windows so you can't see the electronics as well or the half interior that's in there. Uh, it is the RC four wheel drive, uh, right hand drive Hilux interior that's in there. I've also painted and detailed a driver. This driver actually, if I can get a better shot of him, he is a reproduction bruiser driver. Bits and pieces from a resin recast and uh, some styrene bits that I glued together to make a man and uh, I added sideburns. We don't see a lot of sideburns on these guys. And I figured a truck of this age, 
he would probably have sideburns. Tailgate works. Those are functional hinges that I made out of styrene scrap uh, and a little bit of uh, uh, metal rod, uh, just to give it a little bit of uh, accuracy as well. I cut out this sticker for the Trekker logo on my Cricut, uh, which turned out pretty well despite its small size. Uh, the exhaust is a Element RC exhaust from the uh, Trail Runner, I think. Uh, just kind of drilled that out and made it look a little more realistic. Uh, custom rear bumper, uh, front bumper is the RC Four Wheel Drive tra uh, Trail Finder 2 Marlin Edition bumper, uh, also metal. Uh, I opted not to put a real winch on it. I don't think it needed one. Uh, it's fine just the way it is. I'm not comping with it. And speaking of comping, I've actually had a few questions about the super scale system and whether it would be good for competition. I don't think it would be. Uh, it's really heavy, adds a lot of weight overall, and all of this suspension movement isn't probably gonna help you on the trail, if I'm honest. I think it's actually probably gonna be, you know, slightly worse. I would really only use this as a demonstration vehicle of scale accuracy. Uh, but there's nothing that says you can't try it. I mean, there's other ways though that are much easier to suck down your front end if you want to do something like that for competition. Uh, most people just use a winch and a line attached to the front axle. Pulls it right down. A couple other things to help make this truck look a little more realistic. Uh, inner fenders. Uh, these inner fenders are from Mod 19 uh, Rex Racer as well. Uh, they're 3D printed in TPU, so there's a bit of flexibility built into them, which I think really helps, um, especially with this active suspension system, because those shocks do move around a lot. Uh, the servo is always actuating up and down, and uh, and constantly moving those shocks around. So having a more flexible inner fender allows them to kind of move around a little bit, and not get in the way, and not get cracked, which would happen with regular everyday styrene in no time. That's sort of the look at the Superscale 2020 active suspension or dynamic suspension system and the Trekker itself. So, <laughs> I can't get enough of this. It's so cool to see that suspension movement. Uh, and uh, I think it looks awesome in videos and that's pretty much the intention. I think it's the sort of thing that looks great in an SUV and uh, gosh, man, it just adds so much more realism to an already great hobby. Do you think that this is something you're going to try and install in one of your trucks? Do you think there's value in more realism in this hobby? And do you think that this is the way this hobby is going to keep going? Put your comments down below. You know I love reading through your feedback and I try to answer as many of them as I can. And if you're enjoying this video, and you're happy that I'm back making videos in the workshop again and not just live streams, and hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already and ring that notification bell so you get updates anytime there's a new video from the Scale Builders Guild. So all in all, I'm really pleased with the result of this truck. It's two years in the making, which is way too long. I spent way too much time just staring at this thing and going, well, maybe I'll work on it tomorrow. Well, maybe I'll work on it tomorrow. Well, maybe I'll work on it tomorrow. And, uh, yeah, that went on for two years. I'm really happy with the end result. I just, look at that, man. That is awesome. Uh, one more look at that uh, raising of the suspension. Oh, man. Tell me that's not the coolest thing ever, too. Uh, it also kind of makes it, you know, you could really slam a truck down if you wanted to. Let's see how far down we can get it to go here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think that's going to do it. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to Superscale 2020 for providing me with this system. I'm so thrilled with the end result, and I just am so chuffed with this truck. I think it's really, really awesome. And uh, happy to have it on the shelf, finally, in a completed form. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.